Hi, Abba. Uh, good morning, good morning, good morning, uh, good morning. Uh, how you all guys doing? This is quite amazing, and I want to thank all of you that are tuning in this uh, morning. And uh, it's just quite amazing. Uh, the weather is a little bit beautiful outside with some slightly cold here. I know many people have been wondering the weather here in the, around the Texas area in Houston and all the environment. I think many of you are witnessing the sharp cold differences that are moving across this area. As the weather moves across also, the political atmosphere changes as well. But I understand the difficulty that this weather entails. But I want to take a moment to thank all of you that are watching, and it is quite amazing. Uh, we're going to be talking a lot of issues today, and I'm sure you all are aware what is happening. Um, um,
Hello, hello. Uh, it is quite uh, very amazing how you all doing and I'm sure those in Ground Zero. I want to thank all of you and I want to thank our brothers and sisters, especially those in uh, Great Britain for their wonderful and marvelous job that are doing over there in Great Britain and uh, that they have tried to ensure that at least there is some form of a debate within the UK Parliament. You know, the UK Parliament has been sluggish to respond, despite the fact that Germany is already ahead of the game. You can imagine that the British Parliament is now that they realize that they're supposed to do something as compared to the German government that is already debating the German Parliament, as though Germany is a colonial territory although we have hist historical relationship with the people of Germany, but however, the responsibility rested on the British government. It is very sad and it is very sad indeed. You can imagine that even the British prime minister, the one of the weakest in the current century, I would believe that we can trans exchange the current British prime minister with former Margaret Thatcher. Hopefully she's still alive. I mean, it is quite amazing that it is now that the British Parliament rose from slumber as though they were not aware of what is going on. At least they have a, a, an ambassador in the neighboring country, La Republic of Cameroon, and one will expect him or him or her, whoever it is, to at least acknowledge that there is ongoing Imagine United States United States has been constantly on the ball rolling, asking whether, whether the merit and the criteria of the neighboring country land for being to Cameroon. Imagine United States, the country that they bear less allegiance to the people of Southern Cameroon, but the people we expect them, we call them potentially the modern country. And it's now that they rise, they have risen and now start thinking about debating in the British Parliament. And they are calling on the United Nations as though, remember, some months or some, some nine months ago, the inner city press, the inner city press, as a British diplomat at the United Nations, whether, whether he was aware of what is going on, but he responded that they are not even aware. That is a British response at a foreign office. And yet they haven't been able to follow up within the period of nine months. And then you can expect, I am thanking the people of Germany to show their patriotism, acknowledge that there is a problem that is going on. And they, that is when the British are, has risen from slumber and speaking that there is a problem despite the fact that there is ongoing constant demonstration worldwide it's not just in britain it's not here in the united states it's a broad-based demonstration worldwide condemning the action of the neighboring country land public and british the modern country absolutely remain silent and sent his uh, foreign african secretary that basically has no value nor any action to take against land public. It shouldn't be a matter to sit in the parliament. They should be drafting what they expect the government of 
to be done. That is what the British should have been sitting up and demonstrate. That this is the action that they are tabling, not to put a recommendation, because the moment for recommendation has already elapsed. And that the people of South Cameroon is moving forward. The people has demonstrated to the world community by writing to any foreign government. The people of Saudi Cameroon has demonstrated cohesiveness and the state of objectivity by addressing the, the, moral, the moral evil of La Republic and address to the specific government of people within their own area of parliament, state department, whatever department. All document has been addressed to them, but yet they fail short negligence. And now they get a reason that there is some problem going on as though they are not aware of the crisis. Of course, even if they were not aware of the crisis, what is the essence of having an ambassador in the neighboring country? Yet the British ambassador was preparing with through the foreign office asking for an oil deal, just like our comrades travel to London to sign another oil deal. There's something absolutely wrong in this oil deal. I don't know. When people are suffering, when people are being killed, when people are being murdered, they are more for gas exploration deal. There's something absolutely wrong in this gas exploration deal. You can imagine that the British ambassador at the height of this crisis, the neighboring country like public to Cameroon is busy negotiating a gas deal and explaining that it's going to provide an excellent job opportunity in the neighboring country, in, in the people of Saudi Cameroon, when at least three quarters of the population are either living in the forest, three quarters of the population are either in Nigeria, three quarters of the population are living beyond, they are living in the forest, where women are delivering children in a forest. And that is where. The British and representative at the neighboring country, La Republic du Cameroon, is requesting for a gas deal. There's something actually wrong with the current cabinet of uh, Theresa May in this picture. There's something absolutely wrong. There is something absolutely wrong. Imagine they should have even removed. They should have removed La Republic immediately from the Commonwealth of Nations. That would have been the first criteria. Immediately suspend La Republic from the Commonwealth of Nations. Because the people's voice, that is the people speaking on behalf of the people of Saharan Cameroon, that we are in distress. And you can't imagine they're still having La Republic in the House of Commons, as though they are not aware. There's something absolutely wrong with the British. There's something absolutely wrong with the British. Well, before I dive into that, that discussion, I know this is very important issues. Um, our cabinet, Seseko, the, the, cabin, the cabinet of uh, uh, the Amazonian uh, president, Ayub Seseko, and his nine entourage that were taken to the Kangaroo jailhouse, whatever they call them, food court or whatever it's called. First, to understand, they have no jurisdiction to try the people of Southern Cameroon in the neighboring council of public. That's the first thing, the first has to understand. They have no jurisdiction. Our people need to be tried in Boya. That's our capital. That's where our people need to be tried in Boya and not in La Republic. That's what we the first need to understand. Our leaders, because nobody is above the law under the Saudi Cameroon Constitution, that is the president of Amazon, but they must be drier in the capital of the Saudi Cameroon and not in a neighboring country, La Republic of Cameroon. La Republic has no jurisdictions and whatsoever to try any of our people. It is a matter of time, I can assure you. That within the next six months, I urge that 
to prepare his vegetables and eat them constantly. Because I gave him the next six months. If he is not aware, don't be that as he watched these messages, I give him the next six months, he will get the results. He makes sure he eats every little vegetable, nourish his body, be ready, because for the next six months, he will get the outcome of it. Our cabinet, our cabinet, Mr. Siseko, represent the people of Amazon. La Republic has no jurisdiction whatsoever to try them in their own so-called court. They have no jurisdictions in whatsoever. But however, I can assure you that within the next six months, within the next six months, I will encourage him to make sure he eat every vegetable that he can. He make sure he eat everything that he can because I give him the next six months Mark this date till the next six months. I think he thinks that he is a bow. He is in line of the list of we have. He is in line on the list of we have. And know that we sacrifice any of them in every century, in every year, in every change of leadership here in this our great nation. Take it as a matter of seriousness. We have the duty to do so. Gaddafi is not still breathing the natural air. Gaddafi is still not breathing. An Iranian person is still not breathing that natural air. Then I give you the third person because that's what we have now at the moment in, in, in our platform. We have you, you are straight within the next six months. It is matter, I mean, it is whether you take it, you like it or not, I give you the next six months from now to the next six months. There is one thing that we need to understand. Whether they understand the language we speak, whether they understand the language we use, whether they understand, and if they don't, then they need to get an interpreter to interpret to them. Because we have no time to be wasting on the evil doers. Every sons and daughters of the people of Saudi Cameroon has a prerogative duty. They have a prerogative duty to question the any existence of relationship. Even if the Ambazonian government, the citizens of the Saudi Cameroon, has the prerogative duty to question whether the relationship that exists between the government and the next relationship of any foreign nation must be scrutinized and evaluated by the citizen. And it is obligation that the government must be accountable to every citizen. And that is a prerogative of the people of Southern Cameroon. And we hold this value dearly. And we cannot, in any circumstances, associate ourselves with the terrorist government of Malcolm. For those who were in the university, who were in the University of Yaoundé, Yaoundé in 1990, they may be, I will not be aware. There is a, something that I would like to talk that is circulating. You all may not be aware. More of you are, remember the Kondigi, the Kondigi prison. That is all many people are aware of, the Kondigi prison. But it's an extra prison that you are not aware of. That is what is called the Chole prison. Do you know what happens? Okay. La Republic has another prison that is called the Cholen. But I know you are all familiar with the Kondengi. Kondengi, that's what you are more familiar with. But there is another junk prison that called the Cholen. The Cholen, that is where the military keeps our citizens that are not aware of them. And many of them have been hidden and that they are never brought into our knowledge. So those who are within the vicinity of the public domains are often not bring to that journey. But those who that are silently extracted are being transported straight to journey. And so today I am revealing there's something that you may not aware. 
There are certain family that now eight of their children were adopted from the university of their only one in 1990. And those children, I don't have their name yet, but I will eventually bring out their names. So the Ncholle prison is one of the dog yards that is currently residing in land public. So many of the eight students that were adopted and that the family believed they were all dead because they may have been shot. For the past 27 years, for the past 27 years in 1991 till date, it's 27 years. And that reminds us of the 27 years of the apartheid regime when Nelson Mandela was dumped in the prison. And so, then Chole, so eight students, some of them that were taken alive to the Chole prison from the Yaoundé University, many of them died in prison. And out of the 20, out of the eight students, the eight students that died in the Chole prison, three of them were still alive to date. And three of them, they are still alive to date. They are still breathing this natural air. They were released on October 20. October 21st, those students that were have been in Jordan prison for 27 years were released on the October 21st, 2018, which means few days ago or few days ago last month. They were released without any prerogative or providing any incentive. And so the Jordan prison, those eight students were being used by the high level military of this land public. They were being used as a sex organ. So each of these high-level military of land public, the individuals, I am going to bring out their names. Imagine that then Chole, the eight students that were being taken, were being used by the sex, sex organs. Imagine the male, they were being used as sex organs by high-level military that they often flew to that Chole prison. And that is something that is unknown to the rest of the world community. So, while Nelson Mandela was spending his 27 years, another student from 1991 spent another 27 years in Chole prison. And they were released on October 21st this year and left on the streets without compensations. And they were being used as a sex organ by the neighboring country military, high-level military. This is a bizarre, this is absolutely a bizarre story. This is absolutely a disgusting story. Do you think international community, cannot, international community, Rest the silent in you will expect the, what you call the embassy. There are actually how many embassy that is in the neighboring country, except the United States, that is absolutely speaking out by the ambassador forcefully. Peter, the US ambassador, that is the only person that is able to speak forcefully. But the rest of the ambassador are just romancing with the system. And one would expect a diplomatic mission. Their goal and their objective is to stand against nepotism, against discrimination, against brutality, and speak up because that is the prerogative of any diplomatic mission. But yet, a French embassy under the current president and the previous administration of the of the of the France remain absolutely silent. You, you all, you imagine, I think somewhere I go, I spoke about an election that was planned in October 7, a French, French president, through his ambassador, already booked reservation for a president that is still contesting for an election. And therefore, so if someone is still contesting for an election, you already invite him, so he has every prerequisite to ensure that he read the election so that he can be able to attend the November, what they call the Peace Forum. What an amazing, what an amazing, a Peace Forum. 
It seems the people that are being murdered in the southern Cameroon, the France government is not aware of them. And they want to invite people for a peace forum as though they are not even aware of what is happening in the West Africa zone. Remember that Emmanuel Macron traveled to Nigeria. He traveled to Nigeria to collaborate with Nigerian government, to collaborate with Nigerian authority by collaborating so that they could form a triangular zone against the South of Cameroon. Then they're fighting for their total liberation. Then they're fighting for total liberation because we have a, a government that is not accountable, a government that is massively murdering our citizens. But yet, we have a French president who is absolutely ignorant and he's organizing a peace forum. Maybe it's a peace to appreciate that for remain silent. So today, we still have the 27 years in Chole prison graduates. The Chole prison graduate is what we still have. And those were being kept by the high level military of the Neighboring Country Land Committee. Students, students, students of the Institute of Learning are the, vision, are the primary vision for the any nation. When students are demonstrating, it's because there is a system in place that is not in, in line with the value of the people. And they have a prerogative to demonstrate because they want a change, because they see a brighter future. A brighter future that have been discarded. And they have the right to demonstrate. Whereas you have a military that arrests those students that are demonstrating for their own right and be used as a sect organ in Chole prison for 27 years. For 27 years. It is quite amazing. It is quite amazing. And you say you have a military. You say you have a military. A military that is using their citizen as a sex organ for 27 years in China prison. What is this quite amazing? What a quite amazing. Quite amazing. Eight children in China prison. And five of them die. Why? Because why as a sex? Sex slave in Chole prison. Three survived and were released on October 21st. And they were being dumped on the street and asked them not to even voice their mouth because they will be silent. What a disgrace. It is, it is a bizarre. I, I, I have never in my life seen this vicious circle that is circulating, that you find a military that has an organ, that has a value, but choose to ignore the value and use its citizens as a sex organ. The male that were adopted from the Yaoundé University in 1991, that were demonstrating for equality, they were demonstrating for reform. They were demonstrating because they wanted a fundamental basic right for their future. And that is why they see their future slipping away. And they demonstrate to bring their attention for those who are not aware. And they be converted to a sex organ by the military that you think they are military. I think something is wrong here. Please, something is wrong here. Something is absolutely wrong here. I think it's time the United States government start question every dictatorship that they have their credentials here in the United States. Because we cannot pass here in the United States, we have all those we call them an ambassador, and they are irresponsible. That is time the United States need to evaluate who should be an ambassador in this our great nation. We shouldn't be carrying every individual and don't care. Because we think they are an ambassador. Because we have to evaluate their credentials, their ability to stand for the people. That is the word, our prior responsibility. Because we will not be romancing with this. We will not. It's time the United States stand for the 
basic fundamental right of every human dignity. We may not accommodate everyone, but we have a voice to speak up because the world is running into a chaos. The world is running into a chaos. The world is running into chaos. You cannot imagine that a military adopted eight men as a slave organs in Jolly prison for 27 years and the world body, no one is aware of this situation and no one is ever. And the children were silenced. And military, high level military, are driven or flew over to Jolly to use as a sex organ. In imagine in a world, it is a bizarre. It is a bizarre. It is a bizarre. Well, we have those, we have three of those, those boys, three of those boys from the University of Yaoundé One. Three of them that are still alive. Eight have perished. Uh, five of them have perished. Five of them have died. And the three that were left, left loose are on the street and basically have absolutely nothing to think of. I think it is important that the, U that the, the U.S. Embassy in the neighboring country, Land Republic, need to send an inquiry to find out exactly who are these eight students. And they should investigate immediately. They should find out whether, where are the eight students that were adopted by and dumped at the Chola prison? And which military branch were involved in using them as a sex organ? It's time we investigate and find out who are these eight students that were being used as a sex organ by the Chola prison? It's time. It's time. It's time. I think the U.S. Embassy can do this. Who are the eight students? Who are the eight students that certain officials of the BIA military were using as sex organs in the Chola prison? It is time we find out who are these. Who are they? And let them bring them to the public. Because when boys are being used as a sex organ, and they violate the fundamental principles that they stood as a military, as a protective organ of the civilians. It's that the world needs to stand and face the fact, and let's face the reality. It's time. The U.S. Embassy must take its obligation and ask who were the military that kept eight students for 27 years as a sex organ. Who are they? The document might be destroyed. Because the Land Republic is fond of doing so. The document might be destroyed. And if the document is destroyed, and then the entire cabinet of the high level military ought to be set down, or we bring them to the Justice Department, to, to international justice, they cannot be tried in Land Republic. If the document is destroyed, then all the entire cabinet, all the entire general, all the entire general, before both the Air Force, the, the, the Air Force, both the Air Force, the Marine, and every other arm, arm of the military need to be brought to international justice system because they cannot be tried in land public if any of those documents are missing, if any of those authentic documents are missing. And who are they? The high level of the yeah, military that were using eight students that were demonstrating for peace. They were demonstrating for a reform. They were demonstrating for equal opportunity. They were demonstrating for justice. They were demonstrating for their future, that they see it blink, and they want a better future. And yet, they were adopted and chose as a slave organs. And many of them, five of them has died, and three are in the streets. Who, where are they? And who are the generals that are involved? Because that is the thing that we have a question to ask. Who are these generals? Who are these military officials in their regime that were using eight men that were demonstrating for a, a reform at the University of Yaoundé 1 in 1990? You all know what happened when a communication minister, in the name of Kondo community, you may not be aware, 
The minister in the name of culture community, co com for those who were attending the university of Yaoundé one in the 1991, you all know that the university, the, the minister of communication stood up and declared that in our could do more. In advance, the room more. In advance, the room more. In our good more at a university. You all are aware of that, that phrase. I'm sure this phrase may have gone out of your mind, but I refresh that phrase that is still very, very alert. And you all know the current secretary, the current uh, communication minister, the one that has an oversized shoe, the, the cow, whatever prison, the ex prisoner. You all know, you know. In a very zero more at the university, whatever they call it, University of Yaoundé. But yet, this is the story that is happening now. This is the story that these eight students that were adopted by high level military of the Bia regime were using those eight men as a slave, sex slaves. And they flew to, or either they flew to, just to use them as the sex organs. It is pathetic. It is absolutely pathetic. Uh, I want to thank all of you that are watching. I want to thank you. But however, I have a good news for those living in Douala. That is, this government of La Republic, they need a continuous shutdown. Shutdown is the right thing to do. If you are not aware that shutting down this government is absolutely necessary at this moment, because we have someone at the helm of the government that is mentally deranged. You have someone probably yeah, at the age of 86, he doesn't recall his wife's name. He doesn't recall when the, 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 the office he left. He can't recall it, trace his route back to the office he left. That is phobia. Phobia is mentally deranged. He's mentally challenged. He's suffering from mental psychosis with oppressive disorder. And yet, they have him at the helm of a nation. I think it's time because the military that they have been in charge of the atrocity, the military that's in charge of the atrocity, because they have a wages that they can earn. So if we cut down the, aid, the wages that is the source of revenue to them, then we shut down the system. So by so doing, we cut down the treasury department. Treasury department needs to be cut off. Yes, those sorts of Oxygen. I remember I speak about this issue yesterday. That the source of oxygen that is providing breathing to the military need to be cut off. Because once you cut the oxygen that is supplying the military of the neighboring country and public, then you cut them off because that is the right thing to do. So you begin by blocking every highway, every street. You all know it takes one week to make a difference. In Tunisia, you all know it takes one week to make a difference in Tunisia. It takes two weeks to make a difference in Egypt. Then it doesn't need to take a year to make a difference in the neighboring country land for me. You all can stood and sit there and watch it, but you can do something. There are, you know, you have all available tools that you can do. Get every aisle on the street. Get everything on the street. Shut down the airport. Every hour, if you are so the iron, make sure you get your iron on the street. If you, whatever you get, cows, every iron, get them on the street. Every tank, every west day, tie it on your truck and get it on the street. Let's cut the road. No movement. Completely shut down the system completely. That is the right thing to do. This is what you must do. We cannot allow this system to persist over a decade. It takes Tunisia one week to shut down the system. And it doesn't have to take more than two weeks to do so. Cut every link, every penetration, every round. 
need to be cut down. Every tree must be on the road. Every iron must be on the road. Let the military begin to pull the iron while the population is replacing every street. There should be no walk with distance. All iron on the road. Every route needs to be shut down. Every route needs to be shut down. There should be no military movement. Because they use their vehicle. They use their vehicle as a means of transportation. So when you cut them the route, you prevent them to even breathe. Yes, give them something to do because they have nothing to do. So when you give them something to do, then you make a difference. Because as they are able to drive to the bank and get money, then they can breathe the natural air. But once they cannot breathe the natural air, then you are on the winning side. There are just probably 20,000 of them in the 20 million people. There are just 20,000 of them in the 20 million people. So if every five or 10 individuals get an iron on the street, then there should be no movement of the, the military. Because once they cannot move, then they have no oxygen to circulate. And once you can stop them from breathing, then you get the kingdom down. This is the thing that you got to do right now and shut Lalkovic down completely. That is what you got to do. Shut Lalkovic completely. They need to bring down the government down. That is not the government that is responsible. So if Tunisia can take a week time and shut its government and make a difference, then it doesn't need. Let's take on the strategy. Every iron, every tree, every stone, everything should be ruled on the road. So once there is no movement, then the military will convert their weapon to the right source of the person. But if you allow them to breathe and drive their car, then they have the audacity to speak. But when you, they know that they cannot drive their car, they cannot pick somebody, and they are constantly walking, then they will convert their weapon to the right soul, and that will terminate that system. Because 36 years is enough. We cannot tolerate any of this anymore. We cannot tolerate this anymore. This is the strategy that I will be preaching. For all of you, Get down on your knees and do the right thing. I wish you all a happy day.